In this video, we're going to expand upon some of the last ideas. Uh, so what are we doing? We're drawing or tracing a plan using 2D tools. Uh, I showed you a way of making a brick rod, a very old-fashioned way, drawing it using lines. This is uh, probably the most reliable method in that it's really clear to see what we're talking about. But there's, there is faster ways of doing this. One of the faster ways to do this is to use our snap points. Now, where did these come from? There's a few... Um, toolbars and palettes that have appeared since I last was doing a video with you. So to turn these on we go to Window, Palettes, Control Box and Coordinates. And this is the Coordinates box and this is the Control Box. And I've just made a new little toolbar up here. I've called it Move but it's the Move command. So these are the commands that we find in Edit, Move and these ones here. Now. I didn't bother showing you a video for this because I've done a lot of different videos showing you how to create customized toolbars. So if you want to do that for yourself, make that easy. I'm going to show you a different way of using a brick rod. So we're going to use this method here, which is the snap points. Um, these are also available in other methods, often on the standard toolbar up here, you'll see these snap points. I've had to use a, a reduced sized one, so standard for low res, because I've, I'm connected to a projector to be able to um, demonstrate this for my students and also do videos at the same time. So if you want to use this, you could turn on the snap points or turn on the control box to edit these snap points. Now the option that I want is between nodes and I don't want half, I want to change that to a distance and I want to type that distance in as either 120 or 240. Why? 120 half a brick plus the mortar, uh, 240 a full brick plus the mortar. So that's a, a half brick rod or a full brick rod. We'll make that 120 just to make it a little bit simpler. Now we can see what I'm doing. I'm trying to see from this distance back to here where should this brick actually finish? That's my intention. So I'm going to turn the trace reference off just so hopefully you can see a bit more clearly what I'm trying to achieve. And we're going to hover over this line and it's going to start to work out where a brick should be. So I'm going to go all the way up here and then click to finish that. Now what does that mean? Let's turn that back on. That's saying that it's a full brick brick, 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 or half brick, half brick, half brick, and it would finish by giving me a 10 mil mortar joint, because it was an increment, not an actual brick. So I actually want to subtract this by 10 millimeters, so bring it back, 10 millimeters, and that's where a brick should be. So again, we see that the way that this has been drawn isn't exactly correct. So because I want to make this exactly correct for my um, the purposes of drafting to brick sizes, I'm going to move this dimension because I also, we're not given this dimension anywhere. So um, of course I'm able to adjust it as need be. And when we measure that, we see that ends up as 3230 rather than 3233 because that would be a strange number. So how do I finish this now? I don't want this anymore. I could keep it on, but it's going to make all my drawing a little bit hard. I'm going to change that back to half for now just to keep that simple. Now how could I intersect these lines? I could select this and stretch it back. I could select both of them and say edit reshape intersect or I can hold my command or control key and then left click and that will trim that back so they're joined. So I've now done that. Let's do the same thing here. I've now done this the whole way around my project. The only one that I hadn't done was just this one in the middle. So let's just finish this off now. Drag a copy. 3350. Drag a copy. 110. Now what's that about? That was just a reference line. Oh. Didn't mean to do that. And I'll just draw those lines back inside and then delete these other ones at the front. 
So what am I doing here? I'm just drawing the whole outside shape and I've just used these little tag lines just to help identify where openings are. Now there is some openings which I haven't identified and that's just because I'm not given the dimensions. There is one here which I, I could note in of course. But otherwise, we've got most of the information that we need and we can add any more later if, if we need it. So we're now ready to create an offset. Now, uh, doing an offset means we also need to know the thickness of the wall. And in some cases, we're given wall thicknesses. Uh, in some cases, we're, we're not really given wall thicknesses. Here we've got 35 plus 90. Um, I'm going to assume, again, a lot of this is assumptions unless you've got more accurate information, that 35mm represents a, a weatherboard or a, an exterior cladding panel. It's too thin for foam, it's too thin for hebel, it's too thin for brick, so therefore I'm going to assume it's some type of cladding panel. I'm going to offset this or drag a copy of this. Now if I do this with just one line, it's only going to do one line. So I don't really want to do that. I want to do it for the whole wall. So how could I do that? I'm going to grab this line tool. Down here in my control box, I'm going to change this to the Zs. And this is offset constraint. So I'm going to click on this end of the wall, click on this end of the wall, move in the direction I want to go, press R or D, and type in 35. Enter. And then I'm going to just do the same thing, but just drag and copy this time. Move, drag a copy, 90 for the timber frame. And then I'm going to drag this another 10 mil for plasterboard. So that's going to be my wall thickness. Now if I turn trace reference back on, we see that that's pretty much what we've got. There's a slight discrepancy because it looks like they've only used an 8 or 7 millimeter. Again, it's inconsistent for the internal lining whatever that internal lining might be. Let's do the same thing up here for this wall. Again, we've got one line, so I'm going to use offset. What are these numbers? Here we've got 35, 90, 50, 110. What is this? It's a bit confusing. So 110 for a brick, because again, this is um, reverse brick veneer, which means the brick's on the inside. 110, 50 mil cavity, 90 mil frame, 35 mil cladding. I'm going to try to remember that and do this the same way as before. So offset 35 select that 90 drag a copy oops, try that again 50 and then 110 so again, there's uh, so many different ways. So before you make comments on my video saying, why are you working such a stupid way in ARCHICAD? I totally agree with you. Um, my purpose is not to show you how we should be working in ARCHICAD today. My purpose is to show you how we could still use ARCHICAD to do 2D drafting if that's what we needed to do. So, yep, this is very slow and laborious. Um, it's a, it, it, is a, it is exact and it possibly might give us a, a more exact dimension than we'd commonly get from ARCHICAD uh, if we weren't being as tedious but yes it is slow and it's not helpful for creating a BIM 3D model it's really only helpful for creating 2D documentation or 2D drafting and then once we've finished this floor plan we're going to use this floor plan and project it to create a section so again old school sort of drafting techniques not what ARCHICAD's meant for uh, so yep I'm going to leave you now, we'll finish this video and in the next video I'll show you it all at the next stage and we can start to clean these up and start to fill the walls with, um, with the, a fill hatch.